Hi, and welcome to this first little bit of introduction for advanced statistical inverse. I want to spend a few minutes just to kind of go over some of the things that you're going to expect to see in this course, uh, both from a content perspective and also from some of the expectations regarding homework, projects, and just kind of check-in stuff uh, that we'll be engaging in over the next few weeks, especially until we have the opportunity to get together. Assuming that we do, let's hope for the best and, and pretend that we will. Uh, but in the in the event that we aren't able to get together, we'll, we'll make do. Uh, but either way, in terms of the content that we would expect to see, we're going to pretty much go through um, the same stuff, whether we are together or not. Again, the expectations uh, for all of us will be a little bit different depending on what we do <clears throat> in terms of in class, out of class, whatever it may be. But we'll have the opportunity to have, uh, have some fun with some of the content that we're going to get into. <clears throat> so the big objective to this course is that I want you to walk away having a pretty good idea of a few things. The first is that you should have a pretty good idea of how the general linear model works and when to use it, how to apply it, and how to make sense of it. And then also, uh, to follow up on that, generalized linear models are an important class of models that would serve you very well to have a good idea about this as you move forward. So those are kind of the big things that I want you to take away out of that, uh, or out of this course. Uh, not only do I want you to get some some real practical skill and application with, with those two kinds of models. But we're also going to get into models called mixed effects models. Uh, those are also a, a very broad and powerful class of models that I think you will certainly see some use and utility for uh, as, you, as you progress, not only through the program, but your careers as a whole. We'll also get into a little bit of an introduction to Bayesian statistics. Um, <clears throat> again, the, the, the idea there would not be uh, mastery, but certainly to give you an idea of what it is and when you see it out there in the wild, that you know how to interpret it and get a, a feel for how all of this stuff works. So especially as we get into these first little bits of, uh, of online learning, <clears throat> what I'll do is I will have some exercises. Think of them as kind of comprehension checks. These comprehension checks will be weekly, uh, you'll, so you'll just have one a week, so they shouldn't be anything too onerous. But it's going to serve to make sure that you're engaging in the material that's out there, understanding it, and you can always bring some of the, any questions that you may have <clears throat> into, into lab, lab time or really that get-together time to ask questions and to bring up any issues that you may have. Um, so again, those comprehension checks will be done weekly, whether we are doing them in class or digitally. Uh, we'll do them just to make sure that we have a good idea of what's going on. Then from there, um, there will be a series of, of readings that we'll get into. There isn't an official textbook, but there will be a variety of things that I will post on Sakai for you to read. Again, these are things that I'm not going to require you to do. You don't have to do them. But it would be a good idea to do them just to uh, have a good feel for what's going on. Again, they can just provide some extra context and some deeper background if you if you want it. <clears throat> Again, just a just a good idea. General information is never going to hurt anybody. Uh, we're also going to have throughout the course of our time together three homework assignments. These homework assignments are going to kind of encapsulate all of the stuff that we would have learned. The first two assignments are pretty straightforward. The third assignment takes on a little bit different form uh, than what the other two assignments would have. The third assignment is mostly going to be oriented towards you having the opportunity to explore problems that are interesting to you and apply the, the methods that we've learned in class to those problems. So maybe there's some interesting data that's out there. Uh, maybe there's a problem that you particularly have some care about. Maybe you're interested in something to that effect, um, whatever it may be. So this gives you the opportunity to dig into that problem and kind of get a feel for how to solve that problem, given the methods that we've gotten into. Another thing that's a little bit unique about the way I do the first two homeworks in this course, they work on leveling. So there is a bronze, silver, and gold tier to these homework assignments. Now, you don't have to go all the way through and do all the way through gold. Right. You can get a fine grade, not that grades are important at all, but you can get a reasonably decent grade if you just do the bronze level, right? That is the base skill. That If you can do the bronze level, that means you have a good idea of what we're, we've been talking about, how to apply it and how to use it. But if you want to go deeper, then it's a really good idea to start progressing through to silver, to gold, 
uh, again, just to kind of get a deeper feel for how to engage in this work and to see how far you can take some of these problems. So we will have something that's very much like a midterm in this course. It is, uh, whether we are together or not, it's gonna be a take home. So you'll have ample time to complete it. You'll have a week. It's something you cannot work together on. So it does need to be done on your own. Uh, but it will, again, kind of cover the main concepts that we've talked about to that point, uh, applying them, understanding them, and getting some kind of insight out of them. Uh, hopefully, we will be back together before the end of the mod. If we are, then we will have presentations. If we're not, we're going to have some kind of cumulative final. So we're just going to have to play that by ear to see how, how that works. But there will be some kind of end of the mod assessment. Again, whether that is going to be a presentation or some kind of cumulative final, we'll see how that works out. Again, that's something we'll just have to play by ear. In terms of getting into the content of this course, though, we're going to go through a lot of different things. Um, the idea here is that these set of topics will give you a very broad overview of advanced statistical inference, um, but we won't drill super deep into everything. So I really do want to provide for you a pretty fair amount of breadth. Uh, you'll get enough depth that you can certainly apply, understand, and know how to evaluate what we talk about. Um, you, it doesn't mean you may get a publication in any statistical journal coming out of this. But again, that's the goal is to get you a pretty broad exposure to a lot of different techniques here. So we're going to start off uh, kind of getting into our markdown a little bit. You may have seen a little bit of our markdown before, but given that we, everything we do in here is going to be based upon our markdown, it's going to help just to see a little bit more of it to get a better feel for how it works. After getting into that, then we'll go into data exploration and visualization. Again, uh, visualization is something you will encounter if you haven't already uh, in, the, in, the, in the visualization course that we have. But this is more oriented towards getting these visualizations done in our, <clears throat> again, and, uh, and messing around with a little bit of the, the fundamental concepts that underlie visualization that are really important to remember. After we get done with that, we're going to start getting into actual analysis. We'll get uh, some work done in categorical data analysis, so, so things like chi-square and how they can be used to help us uh, answer questions. From there, though, we are going to get into some of the more modeling approaches, so the general linear model. And in the general linear model, we're going to talk about three specific things. We'll talk about linear regression, ANOVAs, and t-tests. Again, things that you may have encountered before, but we're going to really get into them a little bit more than what you may have before and really focus on how to understand them and what we can get out of them. Not only what we can get out of them, but you know, when to maybe know that we may be running into a problem. So that's going to be kind of our focus there. From the general linear model, we're going to learn a little bit about some kind of interesting uh, things related to sampling and bootstrapping. So that's, uh, that's something that will be a lot of fun to kind of mess around with. After we get through that, we're going to talk about things when regression gets weird. So like all statistical models, regression uh, has, a, has a, several underlying assumptions that need to be met. In reality, sometimes those are hard to meet. When those are hard to meet, there's a lot of methods that will help us cure those problems. So that's where we'll talk about some of those uh, more robust forms of regression analysis. <clears throat> From there, after that, we're going to get into the generalized linear models. So generalized linear models extend the general linear model, and specifically linear regression, to when we have different kinds of outcomes, whether we have a binary outcome, whether we have some count-based outcome. Those generalized linear models are going to help us get into that. After that comes maybe my most favorite thing to teach you all about in this class, and that is going to be on mixed effects models. So they are the ultimately most powerful kinds of modeling approach that we're going to get into this class because they deal with so many different kinds of problems. Not only with regression problems, but also with any kind of generalized problem that we would also have, uh, that we would otherwise use generally, uh, generalized linear model for, these mixed effects models will work. So these mixed effects models become really helpful when we have observations that are nested. If you have employees nested within work units that are also nested within different departments, right, these mixed effects models will help us 
best model those relationships and add more context to our model. After we wrap up with some of those mixed effects models, we're going to spend some time getting into Bayesian data analysis. So this is one of those things that we won't walk away uh, with expertise on, but as popular as Bayesian methods are out in industry and in the world, uh, just kind of period, it's going to serve us well to get into them a little bit and to know what they are doing when we see them. So then that way we're, we have some knowledge about what's going on. And then finally, we're going to kind of wrap up with this whole notion of an inference prediction divide. We'll spend the bulk of our time really getting into inference. Makes sense. But <clears throat> we don't want to completely neglect the role that that prediction has in all of this. So not only the predictions that we would get out of any of our models, but also how some of those predictive models can help us build better inferential models. So that's what we're gonna wrap up with for the most part in this class. So we have a pretty, uh, a pretty broad overview of a lot of methods that may be very helpful for you as you get into stats. All right, the more you know, the broader your knowledge gets, the kind of more fun that you can really have with some of these models. Again, the, the more you see, the more you get interested in, the more you can apply different models to your problems. Uh, because not every problem is going to be solvable by a linear regression model. May the code run? Well, sure, of course it would. But that doesn't mean it's necessarily the right tool for the job every time. So this is where we really have to start learning what is the question and how do we best answer the question. So that's what we'll get into. I hope that we have the opportunity to get together in class. If we don't, we'll make the best out of this online world. But either way, I really look forward to being able to, uh, to get together uh, and learn more about statistics together.